Herulaneum, one of Britain's most famous Roman towns, sacked by Berdicea and rebuilt on a grander scale as the first staging post north of London, just a day's march up Watling Street for the Roman legions. One of those legionaries was Alban, in whose memory King Offa of Offa's Dyke fame built the first abbey to overlook the fields in which the Roman town once stood. Around the religious community on the hill, a market town grew up, which came to be called St Albans, a living reminder of this country's first Christian martyr. For this Easter Songs of Praise, we've come to the Cathedral and Abbey Church of St Albans, where the choirs and congregations sing their first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Pilgrims come from far and wide to offer prayers at Alban's shrine, contemplating perhaps his execution on the banks of the River Ver 1700 years ago for sheltering a Christian priest. In the cathedral now, the people of St Alban's reflect on the greatest Christian sacrifice, that of Christ himself, as the choirs sing, O sacred head, surrounded by crown of piercing thorns.
Last year, Greg Peachy went to Rome. There, he met the Pope and gave him a personal testament, including an account of an Easter experience. This occurred at uh, the weekend about two years ago, uh, called Easter Together. Um, when I attended this, um, I was a Christian, uh, but I didn't have absolute certainty about Christianity. And that night, um, I asked God, I said, uh, God, if you're there, please can you give me certainty in you? Um, and then it happened almost instantly for me. Suddenly I was certain in it, about him. So what flowed from that certainty for you? And so the main concrete thing that has come out of this has been a movement called Spread, which I'm about to launch. Um, yes, I was, I was very impressed by a statistic I heard once, that uh, if everyone in the West was prepared to give uh, just a few pence a year to the third world, then poverty in the world uh, could be wiped out. Um, this is what the movement seeks to do. Uh, so it's a movement that is, is based on prayer, asking God for the scheme to work. Um, and it will be held in a series of monthly meetings. Um, and each person who joins the spread movement will be asked to do two things. Firstly, to give a few pennies a year to the third world. And secondly, to bring three people along to the next meeting. And then that's the end of their commitment. Finally, what's your choice of him? Um, I've chosen God of Mercy and Compassion uh, because this is a hymn that uh, means quite a bit to me uh, because it was special to me in my childhood. Um, and I think it expresses for me the, the loving side of God and the merciful side of God, how he's prepared to forgive people when they do stray, prepared to accept them back no matter what they do. Dr. Alan Weir is a principal scientific officer at Rothamsted Experimental Station for Agricultural Research. If I was going to sum up um, what Easter means for me, I think it would be the story of the crucifixion and the story of the continuing impact of the Spirit of Christ in people's lives. Um, but I must say that I've never felt nearly as much at ease with the story of the resurrection. Um, it's so different from our ordinary experience um, that you, you feel as if you, you want some more information to explain it. I think possibly um, being a scientist doesn't help here. We're definitely encouraged to be critical. We do an experiment like the field experiments a number of times. And um, when it comes to an event as important as the resurrection, I always feel as if I would like to be able to do that to it as well and have another look. 
But of course, with a historic event, you can't do that. Accepting the truth of the resurrection is a matter of faith. Faith is, is a gift, like hope and, and charity or love. Our job, I suppose, is to do, do the things we have to do, making use of the gifts that we have. The hymn I've chosen is uh, Our Father God, Thy Name We Praise. It's a hymn from the Anabaptists, just after the Reformation, when the churches were uh, extremely divided. One of the great things of our time is that we've come together again, and that we can meet you know, like this and sing this hymn in the Abbey. The very active life of Mavis Frierson was changed but not stopped when multiple sclerosis confined her to a wheelchair two years ago. Mavis, the hymn you've chosen is Hold Thou My Hand for I Am Weak and Helpless. Is that because you feel weak and helpless? I feel weak but definitely, definitely not helpless. I feel weak physically but mentally I feel strong. In fact, I feel stronger now than I have done for many a year. I feel stronger because I feel that life holds a meaning and a purpose to me now. New avenues have been opened up to me. I can write. I have all the time in the world to do my writing, which I thoroughly enjoy. I've got time to, to sit and listen to other people. And I'm very surprised when I think back of how many people come to me because I've got time for them. But when you discovered you'd got multiple sclerosis, that very moment must have been terrible. Yes. Well, before my illness, I was very active. I used to nurse old people, and I really enjoyed that sort of life, helping them. I played netball for a St Albans team. I was very active in the amateur dramatic world, I used to go on stage and act. And then all of a sudden, I get this disease. And those sort of things had to stop. And I think the first question you start asking yourself is, well, why me? But it didn't take very long before I said, why not me? I can take it, and I can take it, and every time something goes wrong with my body, I am now able to face it and to get over it and fight it. And I hope to continue to do so.
Lewis as the voluntary health organiser at Knapsbury Psychiatric Hospital. I came into the hospital as a volunteer in the first instance through the church. And um, I came with some trepidation, really, because it wasn't an area of work that I'd been involved in. Although I'd been general nurse trained, I hadn't really had much involvement with psychiatric patients. I always think that everyone is a potential volunteer, but I don't think they always recognise this, because I think that everyone has a desire and a feeling that they want to help someone else. And some come to this realisation quite quickly, so that you get the young people who want to help, and they know they want to help, and they come in and they do that. And then they really go on from strength to strength as volunteers. Whether one is a Christian or a Jew or have any strong religious beliefs or not, there is still this um, inner feeling in every one of us where who, that they want to try and help somebody else without getting any financial reward. And often the, the whole thing also revolves on the fact that they are very thankful for the sort of circumstances they are in themselves and wish to give something back. Uh, I've chosen for all the saints. I did my training, my general training at the London Hospital in Whitechapel. And this was one of the hymns that I always remember singing I don't, I'm sure we didn't sing it every Sunday, but it appears to me, looking back, that we sang it at every possible occasion and for every excuse. So it's one I really associate with hospitals. a stone's throw from the cathedral, his favourite place for quiet reflection. He's a director and company secretary of a large electronics firm, despite becoming blind ten years ago. With the loss of sight, one is less distracted by things uh, in the world, 
and one has a lot more time for reflection and looking at oneself. And I found that, that by reflection there was an inner blindness which I had to cope with, which was just as devastating as the physical blindness. And this process of looking at oneself is very painful. And, and I think it was, I believe it was Dag Hammarskjöld who wrote in his diary, uh, which was found uh, after his death, the longest journey is the journey inwards. And I found that to be very true. Uh, I don't mean that one becomes completely inward looking. Um, the thing is one must stay in the world. And therefore, although looking at myself inwardly, I also went out into the world and certainly had no intention of closing myself away and becoming miserable. The Easter story is, is one of overcoming difficulties through a period of renewal and progress forward. And I think this Easter story is paralleled with my own experience of going through um, the darkness and coming out into the light and going through a period of restoration and renewal and going forward as our Lord did on Easter Day. The hymn I've chosen is Come Down, O Love Divine. I've chosen this because one gets frustrated by the inadequacy of words in which to express one's feeling. But in this hymn, which was written by Bianca of Siena in uh, about 1400, there's no problem with that inadequacy of words or depth of meaning. Dean of St Albans is the very Reverend Dr Peter Moore. The drama of Easter is that having fully accepted this was the end and that they were finished, there was the tremendous surprise, first of all to the women and then to St Peter at the tomb, finding something had happened that they had never expected. 
the heart of the whole of the Christian message is that Christ not only did rise from the dead, but is alive now. And the good news of Easter is that after death there is the promise of life. I believe that life is given back to us. We die. I believe the message of the Bible is we do literally die and all that. But there is offered to us the chance of eternal life, which is a gift, which is life of a divine quality because it's a gift of God. Now, I can't describe it more than that because I've never experienced it. And the problem with all these things is to put in a meaningful way something that is beyond your present experience. But it is something to look forward to. We talk about life. It was St. Alban who was the first in England to give his life for eternal life. And here's the prayer which we use in this church, and particularly at his shrine. Almighty God, we thank you for this place built to your glory, and in memory of Alban, our first martyr. Following his example in the fellowship of the saints, may we worship and adore the true and living God, and be faithful witnesses to the Christ who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And now the Bishop of St. Albans gives the blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you closer to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.